Hello, everyone. Welcome to the United Voice. I'm Danny Price, and this is your Manchester United news. We're talking club statement regarding Marcus Rashford. We're talking transfers, Pelestri, and Isaac Hansen Aronen that not many people know about. United also returned to action last night, and Jose Mourinho looking to come back to Old Trafford. So let's start with the club statement regarding Marcus Rashford. Now, the club released a statement earlier on this week um, with relation to Marcus Rashford and his exploits in Belfast last Thursday night, where he uh, had a little bit too much to drink and called in sick the next day, Friday. Um, major news that broke over the weekend that he had a uh, little bit of a party in Belfast um, and the club statement released that um, uh, Eric Ten Hag was dealing with it with an internal matter and that internal matter is now closed and he was available for selection against Wolves um, last night. So let's delve into that a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of people were asking me uh, recently about, you know, what is the difference between, you know, Marcus Rashford and a Jadon Sancho or a Marcus Rashford and a Cristiano Ronaldo. And the difference is quite clear is that obviously Marcus has, has made a mistake. Um, he sat down with the manager and atoned for that mistake, made an apology behind closed doors and the matter is, is done and dusted. The difference is, is that Cristiano Ronaldo and both Jadon Sancho went public. Um, so therefore, you know, the situations are slightly different and obviously the manager has dealt with it how he seems fit. Me personally, um, I do love Marcus Rashford. I do think he's a bright spark um, for our attack. I do think he's a wonderful player. Um, he's an academy graduate. Um, he's obviously been going through a tough time this season um, for whatever reason or another. Um, I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt um, and uh, hopefully stand by the, the manager's statement. So an interesting one um, earlier on this week, um, but now that statement has come out and been put to bed. So we'll move on to transfers. Transfers really quickly. Um, Facundo Pelestri, um, the little Uruguayan magician, um, is off to Granada on loan. Now, all indications believe that this is a loan move, uh, no option to buy. Um, this is just strictly a loan. Manchester United feel like he could do with some development and do some uh, club, club game experience. Um, so he's going on loan um, out to Granada. Um, I don't understand this one, um, really don't, um, with Ahmad's injury record. Um, obviously, Anthony has not performed to anywhere near his capability or any capability that we know of as a Manchester United fan because we haven't seen it yet. Um, I don't understand this because every time I've seen Palestri play, come on, he's done very well for us um, at right forward um, and um, love the little Uruguayan magician. So, um, hopefully that uh, loan is just through June and uh, Eric Ten Hag has got plans to bring him back. Um, that would be nice. Um, the second outgoing, um, including another eight that I won't delve into, we've actually sent 10 players out on loan um, this January. Um, not a lot of people know this name, but Isaac Hansen Aronen um, is an academy graduate, um, very, very stellar young man, great player. Um, up and coming academy player um, has been a little bit disenfranchised and a little dil disillusioned with not getting first team opportunities. Um, and that transfer actually went through today on transfer deadline day. Um, the news was brought by our trusted Fabrizio Romano. Um, and he's actually on his way to Werder Bremen uh, in the Bundesliga. Now, all indications point to this is a permanent deal. Um, and there will be a sell-on fee, but no buyback clause for Manchester United. Now, the news being broken today by Fabrizio Romano um, was that Manchester United had the first right to bring him back for the fee that would be agreed if Werder Bremen sold him. So let's say, for instance, Bayern Munich came in for Werder Bremen um, player Isaac hansen Arison and decided to buy him for 10 million euros, then Manchester United would have the option to pay that same amount. Um, so that's... A little bit uh, about our transfer news. Obviously, no incomings this January, um, which is uh, different from the last January and the previous January before that under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, no incoming transfers. Um, now, what do we make of that? Um, well, we can sit here all day and talk about the Glazier family, but I think with the Ineos transition um, to coming in and taking over football operations, um, the managers obviously deemed it unnecessary to bring players in or any else has said, you know, let's, let's calm down, let's settle down here and just wait until the summer. Let's get our ducks in a row. Um, and, um, you know, players that you need to go out on loan to get experience, let's, let's send them out. But if you're happy with the squad and let, let's stick with that. Um, there's also something that came out by Eric Ten Hag earlier on, um, last week, uh, with regards to players potentially coming in 
He said it obviously it was very difficult to bring in top class players at this time. Um, but um the financial fair play restrictions as well also coming into play. So we know Manchester United have got money problems. Um, we don't as of yet know um what is going to happen between the uh, Glazier and the Ineos um transition of ownership um in terms of football operations. Um, those uh, we're still a few weeks away from the Premier League ratifying that deal and that going to be reality. Um, moving on now to United returned to action uh, last night um, against Wolves, 4-3 uh, win. Um, it was a cracker of a game. Um, wonderful performance uh, by Manchester United in the first half. Um, it was, uh, when I read the team sheet early on, I was, I was actually quite buoyed by it. Um, it was a wonderful um, opportunity for for some players to 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 come into the the first team, uh, Kobe Manu obviously the the standout for us. Um, but I think if you look back at that that uh, starting eleven that uh, Terry Ten Hag put out, it was actually his best eleven on paper, or certainly what I feel is his best eleven on paper. Um, you know, Kobe Manu obviously sitting next to Casemiro in the middle of midfield gave Bruno Fernandez a little bit more opportunity to get forward and roam around the front three. Uh, Marcus Rashford obviously coming back in with a point to prove from um, his disciplinary issues the week before um, was absolutely fantastic in the first half and uh, a great strike, wonderful finish for his first goal. Um, Rasmus Hoyland um, with the second goal, a little bit of luck that came his way, but the build-up play to that second goal was was absolutely terrific. Um, so it was it was football of old and and something that we grow accustomed to last season on Derek Ten Hag. So. Um, I was very, very pleased with the first half performance. And in retrospect, going in at halftime, 2 0 up, it flattered Wolves. It really did. Um, you know, United should have been four or five and completely game over um, and in the bag at that point in time. Um, second half, obviously, Wolves came out from a, a rollicking from the manager um, and made it a game. And um, it was a very, very entertaining second half um, in the sense that Wolves put United under a lot of pressure. Uh, Eric Ten Hag, I believe, got his substitutions right. Um, Scott McTominay coming on at 2-2 um, and uh, sorry at 2-1 um, and, and put in a third away from a corner um, and then Wolves go down the other end of the field and get a second and a third in stoppage time with Kobe Manu coming up in stoppage time late stoppage time as well um, actually nutmeg one of the Wolves defenders and just a sublime finish in the bottom right hand left hand corner um, for the young man, um, a really stellar performance and very matured performance by Kobe Manu, who was my man of the match uh, last night. So three points, which is always nice, something that we always enjoy, um, but a, a much improved performance and obviously nice to see players back. Um, the next topic that I want to talk about has raised a few eyebrows this week um, and has caused a little bit of a stir. Mike Keegan, um, one uh, reporter in, in uh, England who is uh, world-renowned um, for, for actually spot-on reporting, um, has reported that Jose Mourinho is interested in coming back to Manchester United if and when Eric Ten Hag departs, um, citing that he has unfinished business at Manchester United. Um, I don't know how our Manchester United fans feel about that. I'd be interested to see some of the chat and some of the comments. Um, but uh, me personally, I love Jose Mourinho when he was there. And I think that, you know, it, you know, he was pretty much thrown under the bus by, you know, several first teamers at that time, just like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Louis van Gaal, David Moyes. Um, but I actually enjoyed Jose Mourinho, who not, right? He's a special one. Um, the only thing is I would like to, you know, I would like to say I'd love to see him return. Um, but, you know, we all know the Jose Mourinho style of football, very defensive and pragmatic. Um, and I don't think it's the the modern day game, especially in the Premier League with, you know, obviously we look at Liverpool this year and Man City with free flow and attacking football and playing with high lines. It's definitely not Jose Mourinho, is it? So, um, that would be an interesting one to keep on, on track, especially if Eric Ten Hag's performances and results don't pick up here towards the end of the season. Um, I know that uh, the new CEO and Ineos are going through their evaluation of the club, and I'm sure that Eric Ten Hag is under that evaluation as well. Um, moving on to the last topic, before I let you go here, um, Omar Barada the new CEO of Manchester United and Ineos are soon to appoint a director of football, um, something that we've been crying out for at Manchester United for many years and, and having that connect between the manager and the CEO um, is definitely something that is needed. Um, there were a few names being brandished, um, four names actually that were being brandished around, but the two that have come out that seem to be 
the ones that are being talked about right now are Dan Ashworth, who is currently the director of football at Newcastle, and Paul Mitchell, who is the former director of football at Spurs and Monaco. Um, Paul Mitchell, um, absolutely brilliant in his uh, structural rebuild of Spurs and, and, and helped Spurs get to, you know, where they needed to be and good performances. Dan Ashworth has obviously done a very good job at Newcastle recruiting some young players and bringing some players through from the academy. Um, so that would be an interesting one to watch for me. Um, certainly Omar Barada has started to make waves at Manchester United. And I think that's a great thing for us. Um, the structure of the club, um, the foundations needed to be ripped up and ripped apart and, and started scratch. So I'm happy that Omar's come in um, and hopefully with Ineos um, getting their deal done, ratified in the next couple of weeks, we'll start to see some more appointments. Um, so we get a good structure going into the summertime. That's it. That's all for me on the United Voice. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, give us a like, subscribe to the page. Uh, I want to thank out um, our trusted host of our We Are Soccer show, Craig Hearn, for allowing me to do this United Voice. I know how he feels about Manchester United, but this is something I wanted to give back to the United fans and make sure that you know everybody's getting the news that they need. Thanks so much, and we'll be in touch. <laughs>